here we are, our seventh national park. We're here in the probably the most popular national park in the UK. It's the Peak District. Yeah, so many of you will know the Peak District. It's so accessible. It's slap bang in the heart of England, close to Sheffield, close to Manchester, close to, close to Leeds. Loads of people can get here. Loads of you will have already been here. And there is loads of great riding to be had. You, you'll probably know the, the Cat and Fiddle. You'll probably know Snake Pass. We're not expecting to show you anything you, you've not seen before. But yeah, we want, we want to just remind you that there's loads of great riding to be had. Even if you come on a wet day in March, in March it, it doesn't matter, you're going to have a great time. So, two days in the peaks, in mixed weather, on some of the better known roads and some of the lesser known roads. What do we think? Historically, the, the popular roads were between Buxton, Matlock Bath, where everyone used to go on a Sunday morning and scratch away and you know, race each other there and back. Yeah. It's changed so much since then. You'll remember, Gary, back in the day on your LC, rising down the A6. It's so different now, it's 50 mile an hour limit all the way. Doesn't mean there's no fun though. I'm local to here, what well, was, um, growing up in my youth, and yeah, you're right, and I've done a lot of the south of it, done Cat and Fiddle and the Snake Pass and stuff yeah. many, many times. But yeah, I mean, on some roads today that uh, I didn't know existed, and I think that's the, the joyful part of exploring, isn't it? Yeah, is that you find yeah. some roads that you don't know are there, and a corkers. Yeah. Well, I've, I've never been here before. I haven't ever ridden it mm -hmm. when it was more of an open road and it wasn't restricted by 50 and having ridden them today, the 50 speed limit didn't really take away from it at all. Yeah, I'd agree. There's still a sensational road, the views are still incredible, and yeah. still having a good time, ultimately. And I guess the weather conditions have kind of like curtailed our speed to a certain extent as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point though, that actually we've kind of timed it perfectly, because in the summer it can be absolutely so mad. Um, and coming out of season, we're here in March, and the roads aren't too busy, that we've had a good chance to explore, and and okay, the weather's not been perfect, but actually it feels like an adventure, even took them along at 50. Like you, it's still challenging, it's still enjoyable, it's still satisfying. Mm -hmm. I think again, we proved from yesterday when it was really, really cold for today. I think providing you've got the right bike, the right tires and the right kit, then all types of weather is perfect. So we're here, we've been on four different, very different motorcycles. So we've got the, the Honda Goldwing, we've got the Motomarini X-Gate, we've got Suzuki Hayabusa, and we've got the Yamaha MT-10. They couldn't be more different. You can argue all four are touring bikes, but of different types. We've got a sports tourer, we've got an adventure tourer, a traditional tourer, and a, a naked, not a bike. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that you could go touring on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And although, it's obviously some are better suited to certain tasks, but strangely, we've all found something to love about a different one. I think, yeah, they've all got different peaks and troughs in what they offer, haven't they? Uh, and they're all, they're never, they don't, if you looked at that on, as a data log on someone's lap, it'd be like my lap. Like turn one, first lap I'd be there, then second lap I'd be there, and then it just yeah, nothing yeah. matches, does it? Mm -hmm. At all. But every single one of them have got, has got a brilliant attribute that you could use all the time. It, it's a subjective thing, obviously. Yeah. But every single one is brilliant. Every single one isn't, depending of, on what yeah. you're doing with it. Mm -hmm. Bizarrely, they've actually been really ma well matched together. There's four bikes there that you wouldn't expect to see four mates out on those bikes no. and yeah. ride out. But they've been really well matched and quite comfortable riding together mm -hmm. on four very, very different bikes. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of a proof's point, doesn't it? You don't have to have, all have the same bike as a mate to go out and enjoy yourself. We've kind of done a, we've, we've done a few of these trips now, haven't we? And we've always picked slightly, probably slightly more conventional touring or adventure machines. But yeah. you can do it on anything. You, you can do it on one two five if you want to. I mean, well, we took about three ninety to, to the, the lakes. lakes. Yeah, and it was there. You go, and it was you thinking, oh, I'm not going to go on that. It's actually brilliant, isn't it? It's yeah. that marine. You think, oh, it's a bit flat and a bit slow, but 
you know, it, when you're riding as a group, it, it doesn't matter, does it? And I think on the previous trips, we've ridden it against its competition. Yeah. Whereas you're yeah. riding it in isolation today because the bikes are so different. So you actually, you get on it and go, this is a lovely little adventure yeah. bike. This is great. Yeah. And, and, I, and I think some of those roads we've been on today, you'd probably got from A to B fastest on that. Yes. On some of those roads than you would on sure. any of the other three. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when you get to the big open roads, you probably get from A to B fast on the MT10 than yes. you would on the other three. Yeah. And then anything really open, you just want to be on the gold wing. Yeah. Particularly when it got a little bit cooler or a bit damper. Yeah. 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 We were fighting over those. Yeah, keys. heated seat and the uh, and, and the heated grips. It, it comes down to what experience you want, though, doesn't it? I really? think so. Because in, having ridden all four bikes, the Marini for me was a disappointment first out. But then I haven't ridden a lot of adventure bikes, and at the current time, I'm running a T7, which took my breath away mm. so to get on something with a lower power without the torque without that it's without good. the accessibility to getting yourself um, out of danger or, or, or out of a difficult yeah. situation which I don't think the Marini could that was kind of a bit of an instant um, disappointment for me however it's seven grand mm -hmm. it's a nice looking bike it's done the miles it's comfortable and actually as a first-time adventure bike it's going to put a massive smile on it. I think yeah. it's yeah, for seven grand for a brand new bike, bike of that genre. It's worth every single penny, isn't it? I would have thought so, yeah. It's got an EOS 6 engine, isn't it, as well? So yeah. it's going to be yeah, bulletproof, or at least it should be. Yeah. It should be bulletproof. Same, same Brembo's as the T7, um, Marcosi yeah, Forks. Yeah. There's, there's, some, there's some nice bits on there. Yeah. 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 Really cheap bike or low yeah. the market yeah. bike. Mm. And so that's at the bottom end of the market. The other end is the Goldwing. You could argue that gold wings for rich boys that just go away in the summer with the missus on the back. It's March and I've seen some scabby roads in the peaks. Mm -hmm. How did you get on? Out of the four of us, I rode the gold wing the, the least. Mm -hmm. Kind of a little bit at the end of the trip, but I didn't personally think this was the place for it because I think it needs that big open road. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I, I personally struggled with the size of it, yeah, it's spinning it round. A, a bit nervy of the roads and the surface because it just doesn't give you any feedback. So out of all four bikes, three of them you ride, but with the gold wing you glide. And that's yeah. kind of what you do. You're, uh, you're not yeah. getting that feedback. You, um, and although it's great to chuck it into corners and, and you know, and try and scrape the sides and don't tell Honda, but you, you know, you, <laughs> it, it's a bike you can have a huge amount of fun on but I think you need a bit of experience in riding it before you ride it here. Yeah, that's a fair point, I think, isn't it? Um, you were dropped to right in the deep end and that we were photographing that particular corner, so you were turning it around on some horrible little sketchy laybys. You couldn't have had a worse start on it. No, but I cared not a job because it was a heated seat, a heated grip, and you can all <laughs> yeah. wait for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, talking of heated seat and heated grips, Gary, you really like the Goldwing. I did like it, yeah. I went on it only yesterday. It, bizarrely, it's one of the very few bikes I've never ridden. Well, I only went on it yesterday because I was freezing, and then you couldn't get me off it, could you? I, I just I just thought it was just like a magic carpet. It was just brilliant. <laughs> Pretty quick, it sounds great. Yeah, it's good. It, and it's got everything. I just I just picture myself just jumping, loading it up, and just picturing myself and just going off for a fortnight on it with a missus. I, I just think it's perfect for that, that sort of thing. Is it the best thing for around here, for the roads that we've done? Probably not, but it, hey, it, we've managed. I'm getting old, and it, it suits the bad back, and it suits the arthritis and stuff like that. But you being young, Ross, what would uh, fit your list today? Well, actually, I, I, I love the Goldwing as well. I wrote the Goldwing first, uh, and yeah, travelled over here on it, and was kind of in my element, absolutely. Heat grips on, heat seat on, all my luggage tucked away safely, and I Make was... Make no comment about your pace, because it was enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah well, enthusiastic. I think that that just proves that the Goldwing is capable of those yeah, things. Yeah. But I've, I've since sort of obviously chopped and changed, ridden other bikes mm. and then jumped back on the Goldwing. I was like, okay, so it's probably, like you said, maybe not the perfect tool for this job. And in my opinion, strangely enough, the adventure bike is probably the perfect tool for an adventure. So the, mm. the Marini 650, yeah, it might not be the most exciting thing. It's the 650, it's an old engine design, but it's nice it's upright riding position. Lanes. It's perfect, isn't it? And and there, in my opinion, there we've, where we've had the most fun, sort of scratching around on rough surfaces and little lanes and 
getting off those big, really well-known roads. And the tyres were sensational as well. They're so eighty forty ones on there, and really, really good. Like so confident in them, I could have, I could have gone anywhere. And okay, you've got to work it quite hard to keep up with the Booser and the Goldwing and the MT10. But yeah, but well, that's only in a that, straight line on an empty road, isn't it? I think it? so. And the rest of the time, you, you, yeah, much of a muchness, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. And I'm perfectly happy chasing the yeah, holding yeah. speed on corners it, it, yeah, and, and pushing it hard and yeah, uh, yeah enjoying that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a good point. You work the Marini hard. You don't have to work the Goldwyn hard. No, it, it's at it's all. quite a it's 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 such a relaxed ride, and I've said it before, glide. Mm. But then when you start looking at the more sports orientated bikes, now I I was leaning towards the MT10. Yeah. Because there's a an amount of freedom with that bike. Mm -hmm. But as as you can see from the video and w what we've been doing. We weren't luggaged up. No. So if you're off touring and for you've, you've got, kind you've of got, got to bear look that at in the mind. scenario. What, what do you actually want from this trip? Yeah. Are you if you're going to have a pillion, for example? Uh, yeah, the MT10 isn't going to do it. No, really. You have um, to. Yeah, a very accommodating pillion. Yeah. Is uh, happy perched on the back. Well, it, exactly. You'd have to be tiny. For yeah, you would. You'd put me on the back, would you? <laughs> and then I'd like with, to the, see it. with the additional weight, <laughs> would the Marini be able to do it? Goldwing would be able to do it. And yeah. of course, the booster would be able to do it, but you're going to be limited in terms of space. Yeah, they're not, it's not an ideal pillion. There's enough room for a pillion, but it's not ideal. And then, yeah, you'd be struggling with the luggage. Yeah. Yeah, so the big surprise for me was probably the booster actually. I've, I've never never really spent any time on one up to this point and initially I was kind of, I wasn't getting on with it very well. The riding position didn't, just didn't feel quite right. I'm quite tall, I felt a bit cramped and then we got on a lovely stretch of road, the, the road from Buxton up to Chapel on the Brick yeah. and everything made sense immediately. <laughs> I, I sort of settled in and yeah, it, that front end is so stable, the motor is so lovely and you could you just feel like you could ride for days. Um, and I know you, oh, I you've, yeah, you've got a long history with the booster and you spent a lot of time riding it and you obviously were enjoying yourself when you were riding it. Definitely, and it was one of the four that I just felt most comfortable on. It's kind of bizarre given there's some of the scratchy little back lanes and rough roads we, we were on today. But yeah, it was the one I felt most comfortable on and it is just a nice place for me to be. Riding position isn't perfect because the knees are a little bit cramped, but I love it. Out of the four, that's my favourite bike, for sure. Which is kind of handy because you didn't like it as much as other bikes. So. Uh, yeah, quite. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how it works, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. 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 And genuinely, that it, it is a case of we all did like a different bike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Haven't. It's not been convoluted to suit the test or suit the four bikes on our trip away, yeah. we really did end up liking different bikes. And I think that kind of just shows that, because obviously people are out there and they've, they've bought their bike and they're going to be riding it and just the fact that you can tour on absolutely anything, you can, you can get out and have an adventure and okay there's maybe compromises to be made but you can still you still enjoy yourself ultimately. So if you bought yourself a tour, it doesn't mean you can't no. go exploring on the little back lanes no, on your no. wing. And on the MT10, yeah, chuck a set of soft luggage on it, you can go around it, and the booster, well, that'll do anything, it's in yeah. my perspective. Yeah. It can all be done, it just depends on where you want to compromise. Yeah. It's as simple as that, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really? exactly. At the end of the day, if you've got a bike, use it. If you've got a bike, use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, I mean, we've been lucky enough to ride right up and down and across the UK in loads of national parks and on all sorts of different bikes and I think it just we've, we've always had a great time and it just goes to show you that doesn't matter really what you're riding obviously bikes are great but it doesn't really matter where doesn't you are matter, doesn't really matter where you the are national parks are fantastic yeah. we've seen some wonderful scenery in various different national parks the peaks is probably the one that has the least dramatic scenery yeah or the least wide open space probably because it's so close to big cities yes it's still still mega yeah still plenty to go out yeah yeah place. and it's yeah. so easy to get here that's the beauty yeah. of it isn't it mm -hmm. um yeah you're not slugging up to the cairngorms and obviously there's some amazing ro roads in the cairngorms that but snow road to get there. but you've got to get there mm -hmm. yeah, but you could you could come here for a couple of days like we have and have an adventure yeah. and just explore and you don't have to stick to the main road just we would encourage you to just get get out 
explore. Turn right, turn right, yeah. turn right. You'll find something great. Yeah, get lost. Left, right game and see where you end up. Yeah, yeah. 